Hey guys, how's it going? So this is my last sort of couple of hours in Patea. I've been down here for three nights, sort of two full days, and just had a really good time down here actually. I haven't pulled out the camera once just because I've been sort of treating it like a sort of bit of a bit of a time off, bit of a holiday. And it's been really nice spending it with my cousin and his mates. It's been it's been, actually been an awesome time. Scotty does. So it does what? He does done didn't do. What does that even mean? It's been really nice. I'll show you the room quickly. I'm gonna jump on the bus in a couple of hours and head up back to Bangkok. This place was pretty much just under a thousand baht per night. So I think you're looking at around sort of 20, 22 pounds, I think with the exchange rate. It's a really nice place, it's called the Grand Day Night. So I'll show you around and then I'm gonna head up back to Bangkok. You walk in this door, you've got like a big sofa here, nice little table. The bed's a bit messy, the bed, little sort of dresser here, big TV, fridge, nice big wardrobe, window but no balcony. And then you have like the bathroom, which has a really, really nice shower actually. So yeah, Patea is a, it's a pretty crazy town. I'm gonna go through it when I get back and I'll see you three, two, one, back in Bangkok. Back in Bangkok. And I had a great time in Patea for three days with my cousin and his mates, had a really good time. A lot of drinking, a lot of eating like Western food. Had a Sunday lunch, haven't had one of them in about a year. So that was really good. <laughs> there's loads of like English pubs down there and there's loads of Thai food as well. But I'm gonna just go through like a list of first impressions that I wrote down about Patea, basically compared to everywhere else I've been in Thailand so far. Number one is I've never actually seen so many bars, so many clubs. It, it's just unbelievable how many bars there were down there. It was just crazy. There was literally hundreds and thousands. Like, I don't know, there must be enough people for people to be drinking and eating in there, but Jesus Christ, there was so many bars. I did not expect that. Number two is drinking is definitely a 24 hour event down there. Some of the sites were pretty bad. Drunk guys trying to get on the back of song towers and yeah, it was, it was pretty awful. And yeah, the bars, some of the bars are open. I think most of the bars are open like 24 hours a day. So drinking down there, it's pretty much Sometimes you walk down the street and it's just full of like, sort of guys drinking, like watching the world go by and like nearly every bar has people sitting at it just like drinking like they're basically the time away basically. So obviously some people have fun down there. I think some people like really get trapped down in Patea, you know, like with the drinking and the bar girls and stuff. I think some people like really get stuck out there and it's kind of, you can see it in some people, it's really like nasty to see. Number three is like the rules of buying alcohol in Thailand. You normally you can't buy alcohol between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. That's just the law, like in 7-Eleven and everywhere like that, even in bars and cafes, you can normally not buy beer. Some you can, some odd ones you can. But down in Patea, I found that that rule just does not exist. They still have the sticker and stuff on the fridges in 7-Eleven, but it didn't really matter what time of the day it was, you can just go in there and buy alcohol at any quantity, basically. So that was kind of a, of a not a shocker, but like I kind of thought, wow, that, that's kind of full on, really. Like they just don't really care about their own rules down there. They just let everyone do what they want to do. So if you've been to Thailand before, you'll know that affection in public is not like a big thing especially in places like Bangkok and stuff like that, you don't really see it. You see affection between the same sex, but not male and female, female, male. Uh, down there, it's completely different. You see it all the time. It's just like another another land, like Phalang land, you know? It's 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 not, it's almost not Thailand down there. It's, it's weird. Number five, which was a good thing for me because I haven't had a lot of it recently, is there was a lot of Western food down there and a lot of the Western food was quite well priced. You know, there's a lot of competition down there. I did have a really good fry up when I was down there one morning 
and like I said before, I had my first Sunday lunch in like over a year, so that was really nice. I'm not going to go into detail about this, but bar girls, escorts, lady boys, if that's what you're after, then Pate is a good place to go for it. I'm not going to really go into much more detail, but it's quite intense down there with that scene, and it's nowhere near my scene, but if you're into that, then head on down to Patea. Number seven was, I didn't see any tuk-tuks, not one tuk-tuk. The way to get around there is either by taxi, like car taxi, motorbike taxi is very popular, and also song towels, the big trucks that everyone gets on the back of. They will pretty much take you anywhere in Patea for like 10 or 20 baht, so they're really good to get around. Number eight is when we're in bars playing pool, I didn't expect the girls at the bar to like set the pool balls up every time. That was kind of a, a strange one for me, like I was like just expecting to set them up for myself. I went to go set them up when I first went into the first bar we went into and yeah, they were like, oh no, we set them up and it was like, okay, fair enough. It's, it's nice service, but it's kind of like, didn't expect it. Number nine is it's a very friendly place. You know, the Thais are friendly down there, the foreigners are friendly down there, and it kind of has like a vibe, like a lot of the English guys that were over there that I was talking to, like on a nights out and stuff, they were like, oh, is this your first time here? And they were giving me tips and stuff of, you know, what to do in some situations or what to go see. It was like a nice vibe. Sometimes, especially because I've lived in Spain quite a lot of my life, you know, you kind of get a rivalry sometimes between some English people like down the clubs in Spain you used to get a lot of fights between the English because one was from Newcastle one was from Manchester or something like that there was a bit of rivalry but yeah down in Patea there wasn't really that scene there might be because I, I wasn't there for that long you'll have to let me know if you have encountered that down there but from what I could see everyone was pretty chilled really friendly and just wanted a good time so that was really nice Number 10 is there's loads of street vendors going around the bars and stuff. I mean, you could be sitting in a bar and there'll be a lady come up to you with a big carton of cigarettes. You can buy that off them. There's guys coming around selling all types of like pills and medicines and Viagra. I mean, you can buy Viagra from them if you want to. You know, guys coming around selling watches, aftershave, paintings. There's a bit more of that. Like, you don't really get that in places like Chiang Mai and Bangkok, you don't see that, but obviously very touristy down there, that is abundant with people. I was saying to my cousin when I was down there, you could literally sit in one of the 24 hour bars and not move for a week. Like people will come up to you and sell you food, you don't even have to get out of your chair, the girls are coming over giving you drinks, there's guys coming up piling cigarettes onto you if you want cigarettes, I mean it's like another world down there almost it's just it's just crazy like you'd literally be able to live in a 24 hour bar and not leave because everything is like brought to you it's kind of strange number 11 is if you're after thai food thai food is abundant down there as well all the street vendors selling thai food it's really good actually i tried some of it it's amazing and we went to a market one night there's quite a few markets down there and they were full of thai food whatever you wanted and yeah really good eats and especially cheap as well, you know, if that's what you want to eat and you want to eat cheaply, the Thai food is where to go. Number 12 is what I was talking about before is like the vendors that come around. There was one in particular that I really, really enjoyed and that was the pie lady. She comes out on like a little bike with like a section on it all built up and it's just full of like sausage rolls and different pies. And yeah, it's like a hundred, I think, no, it's 90 baht for a pie. She even has like a little pot of like gravy. So she gives you the plate, she cuts the pie up for you, puts the gravy on and literally just brings it to your stool in the bar. Give her the 90 baht, munch away and happy days. I really enjoyed the pie lady. And every time she used to drive past, we were like waving at her. It was really funny. Number 13, which is a nice thing is it's very clean still, you know, I mean, you get the odd smell and stuff and like the odd drain that's backed up or something but you know for the amount of tourists there there's not like rubbish all in the street there's not empty bottles of beer everywhere there's not like food cartons everywhere it's you know people respect it down there and it's it's a very clean place as well i mean you obviously are going to get some bits that are dirty but the majority of it was nice and clean it was fine number 14 which is 
This is the strangest one for me, was because there's so many like bars down there with the bar girls and the massage girls, you know, trying to get you in to give you a massage and like it's, it's quite a seedy place in some areas but in other areas it is quite normal and you know I just found it strange when I saw families there you know like you might have like a family down there with like a 10 year old or 14 year old kid like walking down the street with them some people have babies down there and toddlers but I found it more strange for the kids that were like sort of between the ages of like 10 and 15 because like with the girls down there, it's it was just kind of strange. Like, I would imagine myself as like a 10 or 15 year old kid like down there and I'd be like, whoa, this is like, this is fucking crazy, you know? I mean, girls wearing literally nothing. And yeah, I don't think it's the best place for a family holiday, to be honest. If I was going on a family holiday, Patea wouldn't be the place to go. There are amazing places like on that coastline though, which aren't like Patea, and the islands are really nice as well. So yeah, I mean, if you're going on a family holiday, you probably go somewhere else than stay in the heart of Patea. So yeah, anyway, they were my first impressions. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Hit subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in a couple of days. Bye.